People love to share stereotypes about really everything, and unfortunately, many of those stereotypes are totally wrong, including the top 10 stereotypes about cruises, and I've got why they're all wrong up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and have you heard someone tell you that cruises are for the newlywed or nearly dead, or that you're probably going to be bored on a cruise ship, or you're going to feel trapped, or definitely get seasick? Yeah, I've heard those too, and they're all wrong. In fact, there's 10, probably more than that, but we're going to highlight the 10 top untrue stereotypes about cruises, and really Royal Caribbean cruises specifically, but really I think this applies to the whole industry. And despite Royal Caribbean being rated as one of the top cruise lines in the world, there are still some stereotypes that perpetuate despite a ton of evidence to the contrary. This confusion leads to misconceptions about what a Royal Caribbean cruise are really like. And here's a look at some of the most common stereotypes about cruises that are out there and why they're just plain wrong. Let's start off with number one, the cabin is going to be small. Even the smallest staterooms are still probably larger than you think on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Royal Caribbean offers staterooms of various sizes that run the gamut of price ranges and amenities. If your concern is being in too small of a room for your liking, try a balcony room or even a suite for that matter. Balcony rooms tend to be very popular choices and don't cost nearly as much to move up to from the interior rooms as you might think. Now, of course, suites offer the most living space, but as the name implies, it comes at a price. And if you can afford them, boy, suites offer an incredible amount of living space on board the ship. Regardless of which room you choose, the rooms tend to be larger than you think, and you'll spend significantly less time in a cruise ship stateroom compared to, say, a hotel room. So again, it doesn't even matter that much. A stereotype that really bothers me is that Royal Caribbean isn't a good cruise line for young children. When people look to vacation with younger children, basically kids under 10 years old, Royal Caribbean tends to be in their blind spot out of concern there are better choices out there. Royal Caribbean offers a well-rounded approach to their children's programming and there's a lot to do for kids of all ages on board. Children 6 to 36 months old are able to spend time in the ship's nursery, which is available in nearly all the cruise ships now. And the nursery is an extra cost venue that offers supervised child care during the daytime and night and is staffed by crew members with backgrounds in child care. Now, Adventure Ocean is the award-winning children's programming available on all ships that encompasses ages 3 to 17 years old. Adventure Ocean is broken down by ages to ensure that programming is appropriate for each group and Kids can enjoy a great variety of supervised activities, including games, drawing, story time, crafts, video games, scavenger hunts, and more. Royal Caribbean recently revamped its Adventure Ocean programming on Oasis of the Seas and Freedom of the Seas with an all-new approach that will eventually make it to the rest of the fleet. This update to Adventure Ocean combines new learning methods with technology and more opportunities for the kids to choose the sort of fun they want to engage in. But the bottom line is there is plenty for kids to do of all ages on Royal Caribbean. And going on another cruise line because you're worried that your younger kids won't have anything to do or there won't be enough for them to do is simply unfounded. A very popular stereotype is up next, which is the ships are crowded. Modern cruise ships that Royal Caribbean sails are designed to help spread out crowds to ensure better traffic flow, as well as prevent the log jam of people that some people think are always on a cruise. Just like in any land-based casino, hotel, or theme park, there can be occasions where crowds come together, obviously, such as when a show ends or returning to the ship after a shore excursion, but you will not go on a Royal Caribbean cruise feeling like you're surrounded by people all the time. Ironically, the largest cruise ships, the Oasis and Quantum class ships, are the best at spreading guests out to prevent crowding. Royal Caribbean knew when they were designing these ships that they needed to ensure there was plenty of space for everybody, and they offered the most deck space, bars, clubs, and restaurants to accommodate everyone. So with all that planning involved, it helps spread people out and avoid cruise ships feeling like you're overly crowded. The next stereotype about cruises that's just not true is you have to get dressed up. While there are some classic films and even television shows set on cruise ships, they all tend to show people wearing tuxedos and ball gowns and it gives the sense that a cruise is a seven-night senior prom sailing. Cruising on Royal Caribbean is very relaxed, and while there are dress codes, they only apply to dinner in the main dining room, and they're very basic in nature. First and foremost, you can skip formal night by not dining in the main dining room for dinner. Even if you want to dine there, keep in mind that the required dress code is nothing close to fancy. Collared shirts and slacks for men, tie or suit is definitely optional. Cocktail dresser, pantsuit for ladies. There's no one inspecting your clothing as you enter the, to check the regality of your attire. On non-formal nights, the required attire is nothing fancy at all. 
Jeans are accessible every night along with polo shirts, blouses, or nearly anything else without holes in them. In addition, there are plenty of alternative dining spots on your roller creaming ship that have casual dress attire requirements, but the bottom line is you don't have to get dressed up at all if you don't want to. The next cruise stereotype is you're going to get seasick. Perhaps no other concern of a first-time cruiser can rival that of the fear of getting seasick on a cruise. While getting seasick is a possibility, especially for those who are prone to motion sickness, there are so many easy remedies out there to combat it that it really should not be a major concern for anyone going on a cruise. There's over-the-counter medication you can purchase, such as Bonine, acupressure bracelets, and even a prescription patch that you can put behind your ear. There are also a variety of homeopathic treatments, such as eating green apples, peppermint, or something containing ginger in it. If you're truly concerned, your best bet is to take either the over-the-counter pills before the cruise begins and every day thereafter, or talk to your doctor about getting a prescription medication so that way you can enjoy the cruise worry-free. The next myth, and this one is really just completely 100% false, people fall overboard. This stereotype is rooted in news reports that often involve poorly written headlines. While there have been, relatively speaking, very few people that have ended up in the ocean following being on a cruise ship, they are all cases of jumping off the ship, victims of being thrown off by somebody else, or being somewhere they shouldn't have been in the first place. The notion you can be minding your own business, slip or bump into something, and fall backwards over a railing into the ocean is simply not true. Royal Caribbean designs its cruise ships with high balcony railings, plenty of warning signs, and partitions to keep guests safe. Now, this next stereotype, I don't know how this one keeps coming up, but it does, and that is you'll be bored on a cruise ship. And if you've been on a cruise ship, I bet you're laughing about this right now, but I hear this all the time that people are worried they're going to be bored on a cruise. Every so often, I'll hear from someone who has never cruised before that they refuse to go on a cruise because they imagine being, quote unquote, stuck on the ship and being bored. Seriously. Royal Caribbean cruise ships are packed with tons of activities, entertainment, and things to do, in addition to the fun places around the world that your ship will visit. Now, the best way to convey just how much there is to do on a Royal Caribbean cruise is to look at a past cruise compass. These are the daily activity sheets that are distributed to all guests on board your cruise. And if you look over these, you'll quickly see there's a plethora of things to do on board that will leave you anything but bored. Our next stereotype is you're going to have to eat with random people. Some people are concerned they'll be forced to dine with people they don't know, which is or was a cruise tradition rooted in the past. While dinner in the main dining room does still offer this option, there are alternatives that offer more flexible choices. First and foremost, it is really easy to request a main dining room table for just your family. Royal Caribbean also offers My Time Dining, which is a flexible dining option that does not have assigned dinner times and seating. Instead, you arrive, you're seated with just you and your family. In addition, as we mentioned earlier about the formal dress code, you can opt to skip the main dining room altogether and dine at specialty restaurants where seating is always just for your party. There are complimentary casual venues that offer plenty of seating that you can pick out as well. This next stereotype is more of a recent phenomenon, and that is that older and smaller ships are not as fun as the bigger and newer ships. If you watch a Royal Caribbean television commercial, you'll spot plenty of B-roll that features Royal Caribbean's newest cruise ships, leading some to question why would anyone sail the older ships? Royal Caribbean recognized that this was actually an issue and that their newer ships offered a big advantage and engaged in a series of upgrades and enhancements to the older ships to bring some of those popular features from the big ships to their existing fleets. Not only have programs like Royal Amplified and Oasisizing added new dining locations, entertainment, and activities to older ships, these ships are also priced extremely well compared to their newer sister vessels. The bottom line is you're going to pay a premium to go on the newer and bigger ships. And Royal Caribbean's fleet of ships are not like when you're buying a car and they just let it languish the same features as when you bought it. They're always looking for opportunities to bring great choices to these ships and you will still find plenty to do on board and save a lot of money while we're talking about it. And the last stereotype about cruises is the big one. It's the one that everyone thought about as soon as you saw this video probably, and that is cruise ships are floating Petri dish. <sighs> okay. This notion is the single most infuriating and downright incorrect summary of a cruise ship that's out there. No doubt you've read headlines that make cruise ships seem like they're the single greatest source of spreading disease, especially with the current global health crisis going on. While cruise ships do carry a risk of spreading any germ or disease, just like, you know, any other public venue in the world, they're not the super germ incubators that the media has made them out to be. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, reports that only 1% of norovirus, a gastrointestinal illness, cases come from cruise ships, while nearly all the cases come from restaurants, nursing homes, schools, and prisons. Royal Caribbean takes the health of its passengers seriously and 
continuously works on new policies and procedures to keep everybody safe. Hand sanitizer stations are an enhanced onboard sanitation are just some of the tools often employed by the cruise line to greatly reduce the risk. Now, in light of the current pandemic, Royal Caribbean is working on crafting a new solution to allow its cruise ships to sail while minimizing the risk to guests and crew. They have a public health and chief medical officer, as well as a blue ribbon panel known as the Healthy Sail Panel that have taken epidemiologists, scientists, and public health experts to craft new policies and procedures for keeping guests, crew, and really everybody safe once they resume. The bottom line is the vast majority of people who go on a cruise ship do not get sick. Moreover, the health protocols that Royal Caribbean is employing, including 100% testing, is unparalleled anywhere else. Whether you're talking about travel, entertainment, or really anything else on land, nothing compares to the stringent new protocols the cruise lines are taking. So the idea that cruise ships are these floating petri dishes is simply a notion the media has conjured up because, let's face it, it gets attention. A few people get sick on this ship and bam, it's a 24 hour news cycle with everybody reporting about it. Meanwhile, the same thing happens in much greater numbers all around the world. And it kind of takes eh, it's been there, done that kind of thing. So unfortunately, this is a stereotype that has existed and probably will continue to exist about cruises. But if you take the time to learn about what the cruise lines are doing to be able to keep everybody safe, it's an incredible testament to the level of effort and research that has gone into making sure everybody is safe on board a cruise. So don't buy into this or any of the stereotypes you may have heard in this video. These are just things that people who have never been on a cruise before jump on because they look at it as a way to kind of justify their ignorant views of cruising. So yeah, don't be those people. And I'd love to hear in the comments, what other stereotypes have you heard about cruises? Which of these in my top 10 have you maybe heard about? Or which ones did you believe in and now realize it's not the case? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you like this video. It really does help us out with YouTube's algorithm as well as subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss out on these videos and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.